There are one or two guys that were a touch lower. Vast majority of elite world-class soars for the last several decades are all start with a slightly taller position and come around. In today's YouTube video, what we're gonna discuss are two big mistakes often made by beginning discus throwers that are simple, easy to avoid, and that you can change quickly. The common mistake, one of the things that I see uh, quite a bit are too much motion is the first thing, and the second thing is getting too deep in the discus. In the shot, I think it's better. You can get a little lower. So one of the things that we find that young discus throwers tend to do is they tend to get too squatty. And so what that means is they're trying to come around and they're trying to come around super deep. And remember, one of the key things that we wanna see with discus throwers, discus throwers will have some flex in the leg. And so when you see them wind and they hit their pillar one and they're coming to pillar two, they're tall. Because they're taller, they can drop in on pillar three. You see the, the drop in and apply speed. Now, if you're already low, it, you can't really feel that little slight up down action that you get in the rotational throws. And if you do that, that's going to affect the orbit high point of the implement. It's gonna have an impact on your ability to create speed because you're just kind of rotating around and stepping. So a real simple fix for a lot of you young throwers is to stop sitting, and if I'm throwing in this direction, is to stop sitting like this and then winding and then, dr and then turning around super low. Now there's some could argue that being in that low position is gonna really help how to maintain balance and different things, but it's also not going to be really helping you, the athlete, to understand the motion of that pillar two and that pillar three motion to move out around. If you haven't looked at it, check out our Holy Grail video where we talk about how to get around the left. And when you are too deep in the position here, it's, it's harder for most throwers to actually move around the entry side axis. So that's gonna be your first tip, and the simple way to avoid that is to get out of this deep, deep drop and bring the athlete up so that you can see the hips dropping, you'll see the knees in front, and so we're gonna be able to see that longer, wider action. So again, it looks like this, when we're here, we're gonna see this and we're gonna be able to see that longer, wider kind of sweeping motion because we can move from pillar two to three and drop in. But, and when you see the athlete, they're coming here and they're too far around, it makes that rotational path much more challenging. They're gonna to tend to be coming around and they're gonna get the back in. And that's gonna bring us to the second drill. One of the things that we wanna see is when we're talking about one of the common mistakes is what once we get here, then we get too rotational. And to watch the knee roll. Now, we posted up a video quite some time ago about sweep and the path of the, of the sweep leg in the throw of either the rotational throw, the discus or the shot. So one of the things we wanna do is if we're staying down lower, it's also easier, or when you squat too low, it's really common to get this type of motion, so the knees loop around and the foot is facing down. This is a really big killer because what it does is it makes the athlete too rotational and then they tend to back in. That's gonna make the foot kind of drop down into the throw. So how do we increase that wide sweep? Here's how we're gonna do it. So once we, we create everything a little taller, one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna be thinking about leading with the more of the inside of the knee. Now, some people say lead with the inside of the thigh. I tend not to coach that motion because I think that tends to lead to this type of a sweep motion. My tip is to lead with the knee and get your toe up. So if we look at a lot of throwers, you're gonna see that that foot, once they come out, that big wide sweep, you're gonna see more of this and then you're gonna see that toe kind of come in slightly up as they come around into the middle. And one of the other mistakes that occurs when beginning throwers are dropping too low is the narrow sweep. Discus throwers specifically, when we're a little taller and we're staying wider, okay, so when the knees are apart and we stay tall and we shift from pillar one to two, when we're taller and we're moving our center and mass over in, in prepping to drop into our pillar three, what we're going to be seeing is that if we're already low, it's very difficult when we're low to 
to get a wide sweep, right? So you can see that if I'm in this position and I stay real low, mm. to really get a wide sweep is gonna feel very unnatural and extremely difficult to do. That's why you don't see it done with any elite level thrower. The dreaded over rotation. So one of the things that you hear quite a bit or you can see or a lot of people will point out, a lot of times I'll notice posts on Instagram or YouTube and people are pointing out mistakes people are making and they're very obvious. But we wanna look at why these over rotation mistakes are occurring in the first place so we can start to look at ways to address them and help you improve faster. So the idea here is we get to the crunch time of the season and we've gotta make simple adjustments that are gonna yield big results. These are gonna be some of those things. So number one, what is one of the biggest causes of over rotation? Young throwers, when they have too much foot motion and they stay on a high toe. So you're gonna notice how, how tall the heel is and so you see some kids and they do this and they stay up and you see how tall that foot's staying. So that is going to cause over rotation because what they'll do is they get up here and you can see that does help me rotate, but we need to be driving and pushing the left knee into the throw. That's what we refer to as pillar three. We call it dropping in and sprinting. So what we wanna feel is we're coming into the throw here. If we're driving into the throw, we're pushing the knee in and creating that nice wide sweep. So if we have the high heel, we can't do that. So one of the things is, don't do this. And then what we're gonna talk about are how do we fix that. What we wanna do is avoid ripping the chest and the arm open because you'll see that does help facilitate rotation. But again, if I'm throwing and I throw, it does help me kind of push. But again, what too many young throwers are doing is they don't truly understand that and they're just opening and kind of stepping into the throw. So that's mistake number two. And again, try to take the long path around aggressive with the upper body. Be aggressive, move the arm properly. We talk about how we're going to move it into the throw, but if we just rip it open and turn the chest, that's gonna be game over, you're gonna over rotate. And if you have mistake number one combined with that, so you have the high heel and that, you're gonna really over rotate badly into the throw. Okay, so item number three, when we talk about is one of the key things is we talk about turning the knee in. So now when sometimes if I have everything long and I do this, I bring the sweep leg goes narrow. When the sweep leg rolls over, we're gonna again create rotation and that ultimately is going to have a really negative impact on what you do in the middle of the ring. It's actually going to stop rotation. So you can over rotate and then it's not gonna allow you to rotate properly into the middle of the throw. So again, we tend to see this again with a lot of younger throwers and where you'll see athletes and they rotate here and the toes pointing down on the sweep foot. So quick fix number one, we talk about leading with the inside of the knee and keeping that toe up. I'm not a big proponent of super high. I just want the toe, the toe open so that it can create that nice rotational round sweep path. A long time ago, we did a video on the sweep and we kind of show that, how we take that wide, long position with the sweep leg. That creates, again, the right entry path. If you coordinate that with that 12, 10, 8, 6 upper body and you've got that sweep leg following in that same path, that's where you set up that really nice dynamic throw. I think one of the guys who I think on the world level is doing that in a super pretty way now is Frederick Dockers. Really nice, big, wide sweep. It's really pretty and it's super dynamic. And so, and when you look on the women's level, you look at Sandra Perkovic, really awesome right leg, super wide and around, and she really cranks that sucker in. But those are the things that are going to help create the right path. So you think about it logically. So keep the toe up and keep lead with the inside. Some people say inside of the thigh. I don't want to see this. We want to just see the leg staying open so that we're gonna create more rotation. So item number four, common reasons for over rotation are the combination of you're doing one, two, and three. And so when you put all of those together, you have the perfect storm for severe over rotation. You're probably gonna hear that kind of hard landing in the middle and then the rotation's gonna stop. And we're gonna talk about why that's bad in another video. But for today, hopefully you found that helpful. If you find yourself doing a couple of these things wrong, go back, review the video. Hopefully these are some quick tips that are gonna help a lot of you out there that don't have coaches or a lot of you young coaches that are, are doing your best and trying to do that and haven't, don't understand these small details and hopefully they're gonna help you. If you did find today's video helpful, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, comment below on what else you would like to see, and thank you so much, and we will see you on the next video. Be sure to check out our next videos, be sure to subscribe, visit our website for free videos, click the links below, we have links to our free mini course, check out our websites for camps and different detailed information, throw farther faster by understanding the science with the Throwing Chain Reaction System. Thanks so much for watching.